This is one of the questions debated across America, and everyone seems to have a different answer. When should you retire? As a federal employee, there are details that you need to know that are going to impact your financial safety surrounding retirement. There are things like making sure you're fully qualified for your first pension and that you've saved enough. But figuring out when you're both financially and emotionally ready to retire is a whole nother conversation. You see, retirement planning is both art and science. The science component is the math the numbers and the economics. So that's things like financial modeling and how much you can spend in retirement. That's also things like how you should be invested and which kinds of investments you should be holding and also what kinds of investments are gonna give you the income that you need for your retirement as well as making sure you're completely tax efficient and not paying more taxes than you need to. But the art component considers things like how do I wanna spend the rest of my time that I have left? What have I always wanted to do more of that I just didn't have the time? How can I have less anxiety about my finances going forward? And how can I keep helping my kids or maybe even my grandkids going forward? And another one that's really important is how do I make sure I have a sense of fulfillment and a good retirement plan is gonna have solutions to meet these needs that you have right in the middle. Maybe working a few extra years just isn't worth the stress to you. So as a result, how do you shift your finances in a way that's gonna allow you to do that and live a more fulfilling retirement. Or maybe you're already retired and you're just not comfortable with the way things are looking. So maybe you're scared of traveling and taking on those additional expenses because things just don't look so good in the economy right now. So how can you get a sense for where things are and reorganize them in a way that allows you to feel more comfortable living the life you wanna live? Guys, for me, I'm a numbers person, which makes sense because I'm an advisor, but over the years of helping federal employees retire, we found that when people can understand and the choices they have and the impact it'll have to their safety, then they can make better decisions about their future and what it is that they wanna do. And really that's the goal of this channel. We wanna share what we're doing with our clients so that you have a better understanding of what works. So if you resonate with any of this stuff, will you let us know by hitting the thumbs up button? Plus every week we release new videos, so maybe you wanna to subscribe to the channel too. Okay, so let's say maybe you're considering retiring a little bit early. If you retire prior to the age of 62, you you have to understand that Social Security will not be available to you. But even at age 62, that's what we call your minimum retirement age, or MRA. Now it's called this for a reason. There is a penalty for taking it at your minimum age. Because really this is the earliest time you can ever access your Social Security benefit except for disability or things like that. Throughout your whole retirement, you've paid into the Social Security system. And the full retirement benefit, which is what you're entitled to for everything that you've paid is available to you only at your full retirement age. So there's two categories here. There's your minimum retirement age and your full retirement age. Your FRA is gonna be somewhere between 66 and 67, depends on when you were born. And if you take it at your minimum age, you're getting as much as 30% less than if you took it at your full retirement age. And this reduction is permanent versus if you wait beyond your FRA to as much as 70 years old, every year beyond your FRA, you actually get a bonus of 8% more each year. Now it's maxed out at 70, so you don't wanna wait beyond that. Our clients really like this graphic, so maybe you wanna rewind slightly before I started marking on it and take a screenshot or a picture with your phone. Now, Social Security is yet another debate. Take it as early as possible or wait until as late as possible. Mathematically, we can model out the point in which those two decisions intersect. In other words, this is the date in which it will have made sense to wait for Social Security. If you wait until 70, that age is somewhere around 83, so it's about 13 years beyond your age 70. But on the other hand, by waiting, you spend all of that time never receiving a Social Security benefit at all. And sometimes that additional Social Security amount is just not gonna be life-changing for you. And so you'd rather have the income along the way to be able to spend it and enjoy your retirement. It means more to you to have the income along the way than it does to have a higher sum. And I'm always curious what people think about Social Security. When do you wanna take it and why do you feel that way? Will you let me know by writing in the comments below the video?
All right, so the next consideration in determining your retirement date is dialing into your FERS pension details. First things first, it's important you make sure you at least are hitting any of the hurdles to be able to qualify for your FERS pension. You don't wanna be leaving any benefits on the table or taking it too early and getting it reduced, things of that nature. Make sure you understand how this works. Now, under this special MRA plus 10 rule, your pension is actually reduced, but you can still get access to your benefits. So make sure you understand that that's the decision you're gonna make. What kind of economic impact does that have for the rest of your life? Some cases where this might make sense, maybe you inherited a ton of money and you don't actually need a higher pension. Or maybe you've been a really good saver all along the way and the additional FERS benefit is not life-changing to you either. And great, if that's the case, make sure you factor that into your plan. That's the most important part. Again, it's combining the art with the science. But you should also consider the opportunity cost of your TSP never having the ability to possibly still keep growing. So if you've not been able to save as much as you would have liked, perhaps looking at the numbers altogether can help you figure out how much longer you still need to work to then be able to hit that retirement check mark. Now there's also other things to understand like understanding how uh, your cost of living adjustments or COLAs work. If you take your first benefit at 60 or younger, your COLAs are not applied until you are 62 years old. So that's just something you need to consider in your analysis. Inflation is the silent retirement plan killer. Now for most federal employees, we found that their FERS annuity with social security covers about half of their lifestyle expenses. So that means their portfolio or savings have to cover the rest. And so as you think about retirement, have you saved enough to be able to have your portfolio cover half of your expenses for however long you're gonna be retired. That could be a surplus of 30 years, so think carefully about what that looks like. You also have to remember your expenses today have to be adjusted for inflation along the way. With just a 3% annual inflation over 10 years, you could be looking at almost a third of your purchasing power simply removed. So it's really important that you do some planning and see how the numbers fall together. And this is an example of what modeling can look like. This is just a screenshot from the software that we use with our clients. And it's really helpful because you can build in variables like retiring early or maybe rebalancing your portfolio and you get to see a real time model of the impact of what that does to your finances. And I encourage you to do this kind of planning when you think about your retirement. Our clients understand that you only really have one shot at retirement, so you can't afford to get it wrong. And so it's really prudent that you're doing the right thing along the way throughout your retirement. And guys, I can't believe we haven't talked about this more, but we have a free newsletter on our website that goes into much greater details on all of these concepts. And we hate spam, so all you'll get from us are financial planning tips specifically for federal employees and other links to resources that you might find helpful. And if you found any of this helpful today, do us a favor and let us know by hitting the thumbs up. And if you wanna talk to us about where you stand for retirement, you can visit our website and just send us a message through there. Until next time, stay wise and stay wealthy.